I don't know if you guys know this, but in a couple of days, we're entering into a new year. Do you guys know what, what year it is? 2019. Someone say 2019. 2019. You ready? I don't know. My dad's, I guess, is the only one that's ready. 2019, we're entering into a, a new season. How many would say, as you look back over 2018, you would say, man, I'm a different person. I'm a different person today than I was at the start of the year. Our, our prayer is, is that, uh, that God would change us in such a way that when we look back over our lives, whether it's one year, three years, five years, we wouldn't recognize who we used to be. Because of the way that, that, that God wants to change us, I'm telling you, when we surrender our lives, he changes us. And every single day, every single week, we look back a year later and we are not the same people. My prayer is that in 2019, you wouldn't be the same person at the end of the year as you are today. But how many know that if that's going to happen, we have to be intentional? We got to be intentional. How many know just by showing up, that doesn't mean you're going to grow up? Just by showing up and checking off the box doesn't mean that you're actually going to grow up and get better. It's, it, it's one thing to show up at the gym. It's another thing to get a workout in. How many people ever showed up at the gym and it's like, I'm yawning, working out. I leave. Did you get a workout in? I was at the gym <laughs> versus I get my music in. I got I get my po little, little, uh, what are those little new headphones that, uh, AirPods. Anybody got AirPods? Somebody just blessed me with some for my birthday recently. Changed my life. <laughs> I'm like, these things are the sweetest things ever. You just stick these little things in your ear. I, I get my music going, boy, I'm nodding my head. I'm lifting. I'm getting my workout in. Did you get a workout? Man, I went hard today and I felt it. I took a step. Basketball coach, you say, all right, fellas, we're going to get together today. We're going to take a step. <laughs> Got to take a step. Every time we show up on Sunday mornings, we want to take a step. We want to get better. Let's be intentional. Let's not just show up. Man, I can listen to a sermon at church at home. But if we're going to show up, let's get different. Let's get better. And part of that requires our involvement. Our engagement. Did you know you can get out of this message whatever you want? Whatever you want. I could just talk about nothing. But you could be so engaged that God could be working in and through your life. You guys are, you guys feeling me? This is awesome. I'm excited about 2019. And the thing that, 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 that I love is, 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 you know, at the beginning of the year, how many people at the beginning of the year, you like to write out goals or New Year's resolutions? How many people wrote out New Year's resolutions for 2018? Show of hands. How, how many people remember what your New Year's resolutions were for 2018? That was a long time ago. Many of us start out writing New Year's resolutions and statistics show Statistics show that over 90% of New Year's resolutions don't get fulfilled and are actually are dropped off less than a month into the new year. Man, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to work out more. I'm going to, uh, you know, we, we, we put together these grand New Year's resolutions. And for many of us, we have great intentions, but our ability to follow through with those New Year's resolutions uh, many times isn't consistent with our intentions. And I, I, I am, am, am one. I mean, I write out these, I want to change the world on January 1st. <laughs> By January 30th, I just want to keep living in the world. I'm like, just Lord, I want to be alive. Life, how many know life hits you? And it's like, oh my goodness. And so we've got these resolutions and, and we got all these grandiose visions and dreams, which I think some of them are from God. But if we're not careful, we'll lose sight. But I love, I love what we're going to look at today and I love what we're going to talk about because sometimes it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. 
And how many people know, I know we only have one more day until, you know, we enter into this new season, but we can still finish strong. The fact that we're here today, we made a decision. We got up and we could have decided to do a variety of, but we got up and we said, today we are going to make Jesus the priority in our lives. We're going to worship. And today we have the opportunity to finish strong. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And so today we are going to talk about finishing strong. There's still time. And how we finish has a direct correlation to how we start the new season. How you finish a job when you put your two weeks in. How you finish, you can coast for those two weeks, you can kind of check out for those two weeks, but I'm telling you, how you finish those last two weeks will be a reflection of how you start into the new season. And I believe that God always has something for us in this new season, but it's important that we finish with the right mindset, with the right attitude, because how we finish will determine how we enter into this next season. And I believe that we get to finish strong. We're going to look at a story uh, of the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, he knew a little something about finishing. And I'm going to read through this story, and we're going to talk about finishing strong. And, and one of the things that we've been talking about as a church is, is today is what we're calling We Are Bridge Sunday. Somebody say, We Are Bridge. We Are Bridge. I want to start by looking at this, this story of the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 20. And if you have it, uh, if you don't have it in your uh, Bible or on your phone, we got it here on the screen. Acts chapter 20, starting in verse 22. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, and now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. Somebody say bound. bound. Somebody say bound. 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 I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me. Go ahead, talk to Paul, Bobby Joe. Go ahead. Except, somebody say, except. Except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing. Somebody say, finishing. Unless I use it for finishing the work assigned. Me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault. So in other words, the apostle Paul is, is telling some of his followers, some of his people that he had been with, he says, you know what? I feel like the Holy Spirit is calling me to Jerusalem, this other place. I don't all the way know what's gonna happen, but I do know there's probably gonna be some suffering. He goes on to say, I know enough to know that I'm probably never gonna see you again. He knows there's something ahead. And he knows that thing ahead. This new season that Paul is entering into isn't one of those fun seasons. It's one of those seasons where there's actually going to be some, some suffering. He says, but I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. Somebody say, finish strong. Finish strong. The apostle Paul knew about this idea of finishing strong. I love that in, in this story, he talks about what, what could uh, happen as he goes to Jerusalem, but he, he talks about it and in the end, he declares that I didn't shrink back from declaring all that God wants you to know. He understood what it would cost him, but he knew that the most important thing was to declare who Jesus was. He understood the power of finishing strong just recently I was talking to a business leader and this business leader was telling me about his business that's been incredibly successful. They just built this new location and he was telling me that they started a prayer meeting at this business uh, dealer. It's, it's a car dealership. How many people know car dealerships that are having prayer meetings? How many wish more car dealerships were having prayer meetings? This guy, he, he runs a car dealership and he's, he started a prayer meeting several years ago. He said he started with two people. 
And he said, now it's up to eight people. He said, and we get together and, and we pray and, and we encourage each other. And he said, I, I try to invite the different people that work at my dealership to be a part. And he said, on Christmas Day, one of the individuals that works for me tragically lost his life. Christmas Day this year. He's just telling me this the other day. And he said, it, it gives me this sense of urgency. I don't want anybody that works with me, anybody that I have influence over, anybody. He said, you know, there's always that fine line of, of declaring and being too bold. He said, but man, when you have an experience where somebody loses their life suddenly, you feel a sense of urgency. I've got to go. And so that's what the apostle Paul felt. Man, I know there's going to be pain. I know there's suffering, but I got to go. Paul understood what it meant to finish strong because can I tell you that Paul didn't start out so well? Paul, 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 Paul had a bad start to life. Paul, Paul started off known as a Christian killer. If there was a gathering like this, Paul would come on in and he would start arresting people. He would ask people to declare their faith and, and then he would start arresting them. He was anti-Jesus. And he would go from city to city, and, and one day as Paul is getting ready to travel to a city to go arrest more Christians, God gets his attention. God knocks him off his horse and, and, and blinds him, and, and Paul doesn't know what's happening. And, and God speaks to Paul and says, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And sends him to a place. And, and then God tells this guy named Ananias to go visit Paul and pray for him. And this is how bad Paul's reputation was. When God spoke to Ananias and said, I want you to go over and pray for Paul, Ananias said, I'm not about to do that. Do you know Paul? You ever questioned God before? Do you know Paul's reputation? God's like, come on, man. I created Paul. I know Paul. But I really know Paul. And I really know what I can do in and through Paul. And so after Ananias finally uh, gets the strength, he goes to Paul and prays for Paul, and Paul can now see, and, and Paul goes from being this Christian killer to one of the greatest church builders the world has ever seen. Can I tell you, Paul didn't start off well. He started off pretty rocky. He started off, I would say, as a lost cause. But God got a hold of his life. And now we see Paul talking about this idea of finishing strong and finishing well. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter how you started 2018. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what happened this last week. We can finish strong. We can finish strong. And Paul gives us the ultimate picture of what it looks like to finish strong. As we look at these, these verses, there's a couple of things that I want to pull out and talk about if we're going to finish strong as individuals in 2018 and move forward in what God has for us. Number one, the first verse, it says, now I, uh, the Apostle Paul says, and now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. Somebody say bound. Bound. If we're going to finish strong, the first thing that we have to recognize To finish strong, I must fully surrender to Jesus and engage with his family. The Apostle Paul says that I am bound by the Spirit. What did he mean by that? He, he, he meant that because he had fully surrendered his life to Jesus, he had fully surrendered control of his life, that whatever the Holy Spirit spoke to him, whatever the Holy Spirit called him to do, he felt like he had no other choice but to respond. He was, he was bound to the calling that God had on his life. See, for Paul, when, when he made a decision to leave his old life behind and, and walk in a new reality, it wasn't just a prayer that he prayed. He fully surrendered himself, no matter the cost, to the calling that God had on his life. 
He says, I'm, I'm bound by the Spirit. He knew he was going into a place of challenge, but because he was bound, he knew he had to go. How many people know that when you say yes to Jesus, sometimes it requires some tough decisions? Sometimes God asks you to go places and do things that you otherwise wouldn't want to go and do. But because you are bound by the Spirit of God, you say, you know what? I have to go. I mean, I remember when I was in college and I felt like I got to a place beginning of my sophomore year. I'm in my dorm room and I feel like God brought the scripture verse Revelations 320 to my, to my mind or 316. It says either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I felt like God said to me, Josh, just as almost as clearly as I'm talking, Josh, either serve me 110% or don't serve me at all. In other words, either be bound by my spirit or live free and do whatever you want to do. And I felt like at that moment, I said, God, I want to serve you. And in following that, I felt like he, 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 he started to ask me to do things. I want you to get married. I don't want to get married. We're in college. I, I mean, I loved her. She's amazing. Neither one of us wanted to get married. Bound by the Spirit. All right, yes, Lord. Now I'm bound to my wife. <laughs> he starts calling you. Man, we're getting ready. Get out of college. God, whatever door you want us to walk through, that's what door will open up. Lord, just please make sure it's not in North Omaha. And Lord, just, I don't want to be a pastor. Bound by the Spirit, bound to my wife. Now I'm bound to North Omaha, bound to Bridge Church. Come on. Something happens when we fully surrender. Can I tell you, we can't experience the blessings of God until we are bound to God. We can't live half in, in on one side and a little on the other side. No, we have to get to a place where we fully surrender everything we have and say there's no other option. There's no turning back. God, whatever you say, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fully surrender. When I'm bound, church isn't an option. When I'm bound, giving isn't an option. When I'm bound, loving my neighbor isn't optional. When I'm bound, living sacrificially isn't an option. I'm telling you what, our life looks different when we understand that we are bound. There's the greatest freedom, though, when we're bound. Because as much as we were called and compelled and, and feel convicted to live our lives in a certain way, there's incredible freedom in trusting God and living out his will for our lives. And so the first thing that we see, if we're gonna finish strong, which I know every single one of us want to do, it doesn't matter where we've been, today we can surrender ourselves, our will and our lives to Jesus, join his family, and he'll forever change us. And maybe this year it's been a year where you've been showing up, You've been coming, you've been hearing messages, but you've never made that decision. You've, you, 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 you recognize, man, I, I, I am not bound. Right now, I got options. When you're bound, there is no other option except following Jesus. And it's so hard in our culture because we love having options. But can I tell you, when we're bound by Jesus, the options are limitless but there's a consistent direction our life is headed. Number one, I've got I've to fully surrender myself to God and, and join his family. Number two, number two, to finish strong, I must focus on faith in the midst of fear. I must focus on faith in the midst of fear. We see in the apostle Paul's life that, that God's calling him to a place where fear is gonna be a reality. He's gonna experience some hardships. He's gonna experience some challenges. Faith isn't the absence of fear. Faith is when I choose to focus on God. Fear is gonna be a reality in our lives, but what we focus on will ultimately determine where and how we get through what we go through. 
2018, we started out 2018. We, we like to uh, uh, pray about and ask God, God, what's a word? What, what are you saying about this next season of our life? And I remember we started out 2018 and, and my wife, uh, she, she just had this, this feeling and because she, she's, she's more of a feeler. I'm more of a non-feeler. <laughs> but she feels things. And I'm telling you, what she feels, I've learned to lean into that. She felt like 2018 was going to be a hard year for us. I did not want to lean into that. She, she literally, before we entered 2018, she felt like 2018 was going to be a hard year for us. I was looking back in, in some of my notes from my journal. Six days into 2018, it was a Saturday night, before the first Sunday of the year, we're in our living room. We hear a scream in the other room. Our daughter, who was five years old, fell off of the countertop, which is probably about this height, landed backwards, tried to catch herself with her arm. We went in the other room. She's kind of laying to the side like this, screaming, pick her up. Felt like something was kind of wrong. Didn't know what it was. Was sitting there like, hey, you, you okay? And, and I'll never forget, I went and her arm was kind of hanging. Her right arm was kind of hanging to the side. And I went to like grab her arm and move it forward. And the top part moved forward, but the bottom part didn't. And she broke her arm. We rushed her to the, to the hospital and she had to have surgery. They had to put pins in it. Stayed the night at the hospital Saturday night. Was scheduled to preach on Sunday morning. Got up early Sunday morning. My wife came to the hospital. We exchanged places, came on Sunday morning, preached and, and went back. And, and, and that was the start of our 2018. Several months later, she would break her other arm. In, in, the first, in the first, I think, six weeks, my wife made it to church one time because we either had sick children, broken arms, you name it, we had it. In August, we talked about it, you know, several uh, weeks ago, but I experienced one of the lowest lows. And God gave us the opportunity to go to Oregon and, and had some life-changing experiences. But can I tell you, 2018 was not a fun, overall, best fun year ever. It won't, it won't win the funnest year ever award. And we felt like, man, there was going to be some challenges, some obstacles. Faith determines what we focus on. We focus on God or we focus on those challenges. I'll never forget when, when Pastor Rob prayed and, and, and for healing. And then we find out that next week that several people from our church are diagnosed with cancer. Man, that can create fear. That's a challenge. Many of us, I bet if we were to go around and take some time, many of us have experienced challenges in 2018. And can I tell you, will experience challenges in 2019. But I can finish strong when I decide what I'm going to focus on. Am I going to focus on the goodness of God? Am I going to focus on how he wants to provide? The apostle Paul said, man, I know there's going to be challenges. I know it's going to be hard, but I'm going to choose to focus on the goodness of God. What time is it? 10.59. I'm having too much fun. I'm going to focus on faith in the midst of my fears. Number three, to finish strong, I must finish the work assigned to me by God. Look at the person next to you say, you have an assignment. You have an assignment. You're not here by accident. God has a specific assignment with your name all over it. How many people know that we all have different gifts and we all have different passions and we all have different things that we love to do? Can I tell you that's not an accident? God gave you what he gave you for the calling that he has on your life. Paul said, I finished the work that was assigned to me. There's an assignment. There's work to do. There's an assignment to be lived out. We have to be a part of saying, all right, God, what is the work and the assignment you've called me to? One day we'll all stand before God and he's going to ask us a couple of questions. And one of the questions is, what did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? 
What'd you do with the money I, and resources I gave you? What'd you do with the wisdom and gifts and, and abilities? What, what, what'd you do with all that? And we have to stand before him. And we have to give an account. I love that, that we're a church where so many people get in the game. And so many people use the gifts. I think we've had, I, I want to say it's around 166 people get in the game, use your gifts, strengths, talents, resources to serve our church this year. Whether it's on a Sunday, second Saturday serve, we've had people all over this room. I know this, I know we have more than 166 plus people showing up. And I know there's some of us that, man, you've been sitting, you've been waiting to get in the game. And I believe that God is saying 2019 is your year. It's your year. Because something happens when we get in the game. It's not just what we can give, but it's what God wants to do. It's not just about helping and supporting and building. It's about, man, when I use what God has given me, it sharpens me, it changes me, it impacts me. I'm not the same. I know anybody who has stepped out by faith and who, who says, I want to get in the game, anybody who's given or served, you would, you would say, it has changed me. It's impacted me. I want you guys to hear from uh, an individual from our church who, who does that in so many different ways. Anthony Edwards, come on up here, man. My man. This is a good looking guy right here. He inspires me in so, yeah, he got a ring on his finger. And is expecting child number two in like a week, in, in three weeks. Incredible guy. I mean, there's certain people when you are around them, they inspire you. And he's been one of those guys in, in my life, in early morning coffees when we can and um, but just, just real quickly, uh, how, how'd you get just connected to Bridge? You guys have been, been at Bridge, you know, for how long? And then you guys have made a decision to, to serve and get in the game. Tell us what that looks like for you guys. Yeah, so three years ago, we started coming to Bridge. It'll be three years in February. And uh, honestly, we came to the Northwest location and it was just, we sat in the parking lot afterwards and my wife started to, to cry mm. because she pictured us there, pictured our family there, pictured us serving there, um, and we started to get in the game. And uh, it started to impact our lives in a way that I didn't expect, because those seats can be very comfortable. Um, but we started to realize that God wanted to develop this muscle in us. Um, and this muscle was, you know, we had a child coming, Isaiah was born, we have one coming soon, and the muscle was just learning how to avoid the excuses that, that the devil likes to have creep in, right? We're tired, um, it's snowing out, it's cold. Um, you know, all the things that I'm sure we've all thought about when it comes to keeping us from serving the kingdom. Um, but he's helped us develop that muscle um, because you get good at what you practice, right? And that muscle has grown and grown and it's it impacted our lives as we serve here, but it's also infected our lives outside of Bridge and how we love our neighbors and how that muscle has changed our budget, how it's changed how we see people around us in our block. It's, it's just the wake of serving is incredible. Uh, so we're, we've been so grateful to be able to do that here and grow in that way here and keep going as baby girl comes in three weeks. You know, our, yeah. Um, our goal for 2019, we, have, we set family goals, but it's uh, one of the big ones is to not implode. Uh, there's going to be a lot. It's always going to be busy. Every season is full of busy things, right? Uh, but we don't want to implode on ourselves and use those excuses that a lot of people would not blame us for. But we want to keep serving. We want to keep loving. We want to keep getting outside of ourselves because muscles grow away if you don't use them. Um, so, yeah, yeah. One more, one more thing. Number one, I can tell you, you use your muscles. But we've talked a lot about, yeah, just the whole idea of loving and getting out of the seats into the streets. And you talk about that bridge culture. 
and how it's affected your life. T tell us, how has it affected your work? Because you're, you're leading at work in a variety of different ways. And, and so how has serving here and stepping out here affected your, your life at work? Um, so it has, so I'll put it this way, work isn't about work. Um, our purpose always is to be about his work. Um, so whether it's here or at work or with friends, it, it has changed the way I see what I do from a nine to five, Monday through Friday. Um, it allows me to see people and the byproduct of that and success at work, I mean, that's, that's nice, but people and who they are and where they are, it's changed my perspective as a leader yep. um, and allowed me to enter into relationships that are messy, um, but that's what God does for me. I'm messy and he enters into relationship with me. So it's, it's changed my perspective as a leader and uh, turned work into a purpose to love people well. Come on. Yeah. Awesome. Can we give it up one more time for Anthony? He, he would never say this, but at work, he, he just got promoted and he's overseeing a handful of people. And they just voted him at work as the person that they wanted to honor this year who has been most impactful at their organization. If that's not a testament to, to him and to God and how God is using him, this stuff, man, this stuff is, it, it's, it goes beyond Sunday mornings. It bleeds into our neighborhoods. It bleeds into our, our workspaces and our communities. It's powerful. As we get ready to land, we get an opportunity to finish strong. And if you haven't been in the game serving, I'm telling you, 2019, we'd love to see you get in the game. You've got something to give. You've got something to offer. We're going to pray together. Believing that 2019 is going to be an incredible year. And starting today, we are going to finish strong with all that God has and wants us to do. Before I pray, maybe you're here today and, and, and you would say, man, I need to make a decision to finish strong and I need to fully surrender myself to God. Can I tell you, that's the greatest decision we could ever make in our lives. We'd love to talk with you. We'd love to pray with you afterwards. We'd love to invite you to come forward after we're done. We'd love to help you say yes. Be bound by the Spirit. And never be the same. We're going to en enter 2019 with a sense of hope and expectation for what God wants to do. I want you to touch somebody as we pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that, 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 that your promises are yes and amen. God, today we commit ourselves to finishing strong. God, whatever it means, whether it's surrendering to you, whether, God, it's focusing on faith over our fears, God, whether it's getting in the game and serving in 2019, we choose today to finish strong. God, I thank you for every person in this room. Lord, would, would today be a defining moment? Lord, we're expecting. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, Bridge Church, say, that's what's up. Say amen. 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 Come on, make some noise. Come on. Hey, as you leave find five people and tell them finish strong finish strong finish strong you guys enjoy new years and look forward to seeing you guys in 2019 come on